Imagine there was a machine that if you just pressed the button, it would make your own coffee for you. Completely from scratch. I guess you could call it a coffee machine. Well, this one's slightly different. It actually brews coffee the same way a human does, for that extra human touch. And it can make as many cups as you want. So here's the story of how I made one. Making a coffee robot this way is a lot harder than it seems. You need a way of reliably pouring water over a filter. And normally you do this by hand, by pouring from a kettle in a spiral-like motion. This is easy for a human to do, but for a robot, this is quite a complex motion. With a path like this, the direction that the robot has to move in is always changing. And not just in one dimension, but two. So my first idea was to simply place the cup on a rotating platform and then have a mechanism that moves in and out, allowing a spiral to be made. But after realizing how much the liquid inside would slosh around, I decided to take a bit of a different route and I may have gone slightly overboard. I've decided to build a two axis system with a cantilever that moves back and forth. But having these heavy stepper motors at the end of a moving arm isn't exactly a good idea. So I built the entire structure using lightweight aluminium extrusion, which is connected together using sliding T-nuts. And the design I've come up with is pretty interesting. The X axis runs directly down the cantilever arm and consists of a belt driving a sliding block and a linear rail. Setting it up this way means the motor weight is kept near the base. And for similar reasons, I'm using a belt and pinion setup to drive the Y axis, resulting in a system that hangs over the coffee cup and remains relatively stable while moving. The next step is to build a system to grind the coffee beans. Normally you would just pour them into a grinder and start cranking away, but doing this manually takes way too long. I mean way too long. Not to mention the wrist pain once you're done. So the plan is to automate this with a stepper. And since I'm using so many motors, I need a powerful microcontroller. I was planning on using this STM32 board since it's more than capable of controlling three steppers at the same time. But after spending a couple days setting up the tool chain, fixing some bugs, and then finally getting it to blink, I ended up running out of time. So I had to switch to an Arduino I had instead. I'm probably going to save the STM32 for a future project, so let me know if you have any ideas in the comments. After testing out the stepper motor, I realised I can't just strap the motor directly onto the grinder. And that's because of torque. When using a coffee grinder, the average human can exert up to 8 newton meters of torque, whereas my stepper motor outputs less than 20 times that. Clearly that's not enough. So I've decided to use a gearbox which will attach to the end of the stepper before its power gets transferred to the grinder. The trade-off is, while the stepper motor is quite fast, the output shaft now turns very slowly. So I'm not entirely convinced it's faster than grinding by hand. But on the bright side, it does seem to work. So now we have a working setup for automatic grinding. So now I need to figure out how to get boiling water from the kettle into the cup. But before I can even do that, the robot has to press the button on the kettle to get it to boil in the first place. To handle that, I'll be using a servo motor with a horn attached. Normally a servo simply rotates back and forth, but if I place it at just the right location and send it a predetermined angle, I can get it to press the button. And this turned out to be a pretty reliable way to get the kettle turned on and off. For transporting the boiling water, I'm using food safe PVC tubing. It's going to be connected to a peristaltic pump, which has a special mechanism for moving fluids without actually touching them. The plan is to have the water flow up through a hole in the top of the kettle, through the tubing and out the other end of the pump into the cup. Taking a closer look, you can see how the pump mechanism works. Inside there are three rollers, and they compress the tubing in a sequence that squeezes the liquid repeatedly forwards. And this happens really fast with the end result being a steady rate of flow. Now it's time to see if it works with boiling water.
Nice. Although I have noticed that the PVC tubing gets surprisingly elastic when it's filled with hot water, which probably isn't supposed to happen. Well, at least I managed not to splash any water on the electronics here. The next challenge is to work on the 2D motion system. I was able to get each axis to move independently quite easily. But before attempting some more complicated motions, I first need to get the axis to move to different target points. If you simply run both axes at the same speed, you can get a nice smooth diagonal. But that only works when the distance to the target is the same for both axes. If say one axis needs to travel further than the other, you end up with this awkward jagged motion. In this specific example, it's because the up and down motion takes longer to execute than the side to side one. And the solution to this problem is surprisingly simple. Just slow down the faster axis so that it ends at the same time as the slower one. The name of this technique is Cartesian Interpolated Motion, and it's used in things like 3D printers. Finally, we can work on the movements that will be used to spread water evenly over the coffee grounds. The easiest way to do this would be to follow the path of a spiral, and sure enough, all the equations can be found online. And what they boil down to is essentially sinusoidal motion. If you can get one axis to cycle back and forth, and the other to do the same thing, except offset by a quarter cycle, combining them results in circular motion. And moving in a circle is halfway towards a spiral. To look at it from another angle, what's really happening here is I'm calculating the points on the circumference of a circle. And then moving between them using the code from earlier approximates circular motion. And the coolest part is, the more points on the circle you use, the better the approximation. And when you have all this in code, you can use lots of points. If you enjoy applying concepts in science and engineering like this, you might want to check out Brilliant, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. Brilliant has tons of courses on topics like scientific thinking that help you build your intuition through hands-on problem solving. Figuring out how to make something work is incredibly satisfying, and Brilliant helps you develop those skills with interactive lessons. Personally, I love solving problems and trying to learn something new every day. And Brilliant is a great way to do that. You don't just memorize formulas, instead you work through problems until the concepts actually click. They also personalize your learning path based on your background, so you're always working at the right level and building a genuine understanding. To learn for free on Brilliant for a full 30 days, go to brilliant.org slash zero shot, scan the QR code on screen, or click on the link in the description. Brilliant's also given our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. Again, thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring the video. So now that we can trace a circle, moving on to a spiral is a lot easier. If you think about it, a spiral is just a circle that keeps getting smaller and smaller. So starting at the rim of the cup, the machine needs to repeatedly trace circular paths with a slowly decreasing radius. And this is what that looks like. You can see the machine is starting to wobble a bit, but it looks pretty good. So I think it's time to finally test the full brewing process to see how well the whole system copes. Clearly we have some issues that need ironing out, especially if I don't want water to be splashed all over the electronics. First up, I need to prevent the hose from flopping around and spraying water everywhere. So I've designed this 3D printed guide piece to hold it more rigidly. There's also the problem of the grinder bumping into the filter cup. So I've made a spacer that lifts it up by about 10 millimeters, so it doesn't collide anymore. And lastly, I recalculated the hose's center position since I noticed it was way off.
After a few more test runs, including one where the machine managed to pour lukewarm water over the filter, I managed to make a batch that seems decent. Upon further inspection, it seems like the filter process was successful. And surprisingly enough, it tastes exactly like I made it myself, which I think is a big success. And the great thing is, I can just set it up to go again, and within 5 minutes, I have another freshly brewed cup of coffee. So that pretty much covers everything. Let me know what you think in the comments, and if you have any ideas for future videos.